And here I was on my way from my last class to my second class. They were back at it again. Yo, they back at it again. Back at it again. These people come maybe every semester. I'm not sure, but I always see them once a year. And they hold these signs up just pretty much telling everybody that they're going to go to hell or just telling people that they're going to go to hell. And, you know, I thought to myself, I'm like, man, are they doing this because they care about people and really love them or do they just want attention and some clout, you know? So I approached them and I asked some questions. I didn't ask that specifically, you know, cause I didn't really want to insult him, but this is a very dramatic way of bringing people to Christ. Now, I was not raised in a Christian household. Um, did not follow, did not care about Jesus, didn't care about him, didn't know about him. Right. I, mean, I knew a little bit here and there, but I didn't care. And pretty much, he's just preaching to everybody, holding up this sign. It's like, I asked myself, is this like the best first impression of Christ? You know, like I'm not against this, nor am I for it necessarily, but I mean, I'm all for Christ, so if this is the work of Christ, the work of God, then so be it. But uh, I definitely will say this is much better than not preaching at all because a lot of the the naysayers like that are Christian will sit back that obviously do nothing to get the gospel out and reach other people with it. Like we're called to be fishers of men. So let's, uh, you know, it's better than doing nothing. Yo, what is you doing, bro? <laughs> okay, so, something crazy about this though is last year, <laughs> at this exact date, and this is like maybe two days ago, let me think. I think it was on Valentine's Day. Bro, they started at that same exact spot, brought those signs up, and Within 20 minutes, bro, the whole college's LGBTQ community was there within 10 minutes. Because I, I just walked past it just like a normal day trying to get to my class. And uh, I was talking to my friend. And then we turn around, bro. <claps> Boom, bro. Dude, there were like people wearing rainbow shirts, you know, like wearing like very sexually revealing clothes. Just a lot of pride merchandise or attire like there's like at least a hundred people that just showed up out of nowhere i'm like holy crap i didn't stay long enough to see the ends of it but you know it, i'm just gonna show you guys what videos i got and my intake on them what do you think about furries you know i just saw him and i'm humble so do you believe in furries yeah, there was this one kid, man. <laughs> Dude, bro kept trolling him the whole time. Like, oh, like asking him, oh, you like Kendrick Lamar? Da -da 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 -da. Dude, he was just trying to give him a hard time, bro. Homie was, uh, he was just trolling. You know, I just saw him and I'm humble. So, do you believe in furries? Okay. Yeah. I'm pride. Furries or no? I'm pride. You like pride? Like Kendrick Lamar? I'm cheese man. Kendrick Lamar. Song, you know, Pride? You, you ever heard Pride? Like Kendrick Lamar? Bro, you gotta listen to Kendrick Lamar. He's the goat, bro. He's yeah, the goat. And so was his friend. His friend that asked, uh, what do you think about furries? Like, this dude probably does not even know what furries is, bro. Man is like at least a century years old, bro. <laughs> Pretty much all this is a warning sign. You know, just talking about hell. It says, warning, drunkards, thieves, homosexuals, liars, fornicators, atheists, potty mouths, drug users, Muslims, false religions, racists, transgender, 
baby killers, sin approvers, all unrepentant sinners, hell awaits. Judgment is coming. Don't go to hell. This is like pretty much convicting everybody. I think uh, his sign would have been a lot better off if it just said, don't go to hell. Warning, don't go to hell. And all the rest of the details, it's it's really, you know, it really points fingers at people, you know? And I'm not saying if that's a good or bad thing, but dude, it just made me thought like, bro, are you just trying to seek attention? You trying to, cause he had a GoPro on him. So it's like, bro, isn't just doing this like without filming and maybe he's filming for safety. I don't know, but I had a hunch that man just like wants to get some clout out of this. And uh, if that's like your reason to preach the gospel, oh my gosh, bro, my bad. If that's your reason to preach the gospel, then uh, you ain't doing it for Christ. And I honestly, I can't read this man's heart. Was he doing it for clout or purely out of the love of God? I'm not sure, but that's up to him and God. You know, I, I don't have a, what do you call it? Telepathy or mind reading powers or whatever. Yeah, I'll bet. Oh. I'll bet. Wait, why is there like a warning sign? Oh, is it hazmat? Is it like fireproof? The, the jacket? I guess you can read and find out. Risk of fire? Well, I, I don't, I'm, that's why I'm asking. I, I read it. No, you didn't read it. Yeah. You read part of it, you're being lazy. Fuck, bro. I'm being lazy. All right, teach me to be unlazy, bro. What should I do to be unlazy? I don't know. Start by reading the whole thing. All right, all right, so. R-I-S-K, that says risk. O-F, fire. Oh, uh, fire, okay. What does the thing below say? Pasal, Pasal, nine. It's not nine seventeen, bro. Two o four, bro. Time's wrong. And then you know, I wasn't just gonna stand there and uh, just listen to these people. At some point, it got quiet, so I was like, you know, this is my chance to ask some questions. Right. But God commands us to live in obedience and holiness to Him. Right. So if true repentance includes making no provision for that sin to happen again. Here I am right here. We're talking about repenting and you know how we constantly fall in sin. But before that, he was saying something that just threw me off. It was just sort of like he was saying in a tone of, oh, I stopped sinning ever since I started following Christ. That sort of tone. Because I asked him, my question was, have you sinned ever since following following Christ? And uh, he did, I don't know what he said word for word, but it just sounded like saying he stopped falling in sin. But he, he cleared that up with me, thank God. Because I was like, huh, that sounds a little suspicious. Wait, so so do, do you sin? Do I sin? Yeah. What does that mean? Like, Elaborate do, your question. Do, do you ever fall like into sin? What do you mean do you ever? Like when you go through daily life, do you commit sin sometimes? Okay, well, if I've sinned thousands of times in my right. past. Since becoming a Christian, sin has been a few and far between. Right. I have no sin currently in my life. Here he says, I have no sin currently in my life. And I'm like, I, I really don't know what to think about that because we are sinful by nature ever since Eve ate the apple and uh, you know we are sanctified through Jesus but like here's one thing that is for clear is that by nature we have the urge to sin you know I think by him saying I have no current sin in my life it's just like he's not willingly like sinning and you know just sort of Assuming the sinning lifestyle. And I plan to never sin again. Right. Doesn't mean it's going to happen. That's my plan. Right. But if that... I were to sin, I'm not presuming I'm going to, but if I were, right. then I need to repent and confess and receive forgiveness. If I sin in the future and refuse to repent, and truly repent, I'm in danger of going to hell. Right. So, 
What, what, what was- Okay, hear me out. I was stuttering. <laughs> Cause like, I don't know, I, I, it, it was kind of bold for me to just confront him because he seemed mad confident and had some like pride, sort of like caring on him. He just he was just really confident pretty much. And you know, talking to people in front of what, like I think there was like 10 other people gra gathered around there. It was slightly nerve wracking, but whatever. I still got to ask my questions and I got some answers from him. And I, I'm not sure if I got his name or not, but I don't, dude, he just seemed cocky, man. I don't know what it was, but this is just, he is delivering the truth. But with this attitude of pride, and you could hear it in his tone, where he kind of just looks down on me, if you know what I mean. I mean, look, okay, I'm like 5'6", bro. Man, homie was pretty giant. He's physically looking down on me, but he was talking down as well. So what do you think about your sin, like our innate sinful nature? I don't thought of Nate. The Bible never says that. I don't thought of Nate. So here I ask, what do you think about our innate, um, what do you call it, capability or our nature of sinning? Bro, he said it's not innate. The definition for innate is natural, you know? And ever since Eve ate the apple, you don't have to teach a baby. Or, a, or he'll be like a toddler or something. Just really not exposed to the world as much. You don't need to teach him not to lie or cry or just give like a fuss when he's not getting something he wants. Or like, yeah, if, if a little kid gets in trouble and doesn't want to admit it, he'll lie. You know, no, nobody taught him how to lie, but lying is a sin, obviously. And this man said, we aren't born with it pretty much. And I'm like, hmm, is that really for the Bible, you know? Uh-huh. He was getting fishy. The Bible talks about a sinful nature, but something you develop over time through sinning. Right. Uh, I mean, before I became a Christian, one of my, one of my biggest sins was probably uh, sexual immorality. Right. That's a big one. Drunkenness yeah. and um, anger. Right. Right. When I repented, I got rid of all that stuff. I got, I got right with God. and uh, Now, since I've got right with God, I have fallen to some of those sins again. I've chosen to sin, against, sin those ways again. Right. But, I, you know, in those situations, I, I didn't have to. I shouldn't have. It's all my fault. It wasn't my nature's fault. He says it's not nature's fault. And, look, well, that's facts, you know. It's, uh our faults that we sin, you know. That's the whole point of repenting, is to turn away from it. I have a divine nature now, according to Scripture. Okay. The Holy Spirit lives inside of me. And He changed me into a new creature in Christ. Right. All the old things passed away, all things become new. That's true of every Christian. doesn't mean just like, if you commit a sin and you're asking for repentance. Oh God, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. And like, you got like the intentions of doing it again you know but you know that's really between you and god depending on where you are at in the process of like sinning is you just got to be open with it to god you know about every single detail like that doesn't that shouldn't discourage you to not repent but just repent you know god works within you so over time that's when the fruits of that accumulate because because what i thought was was you're kind of saying like you you stopped sinning ever since you like picked up the cross or started following christ I wish I could say that. right okay i that I, I i i was just a little i was just a little mixed up right okay right Okay. If I walk in the spirit, I won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Right. But if, if I if I do choose to backslide and sin again, it's my own fault. No one else's fault. Okay. Yeah. Not my own fault. Not my nature's fault. Not the world's fault. My parents' fault. Not my name's fault. The month. Okay. So how how long have you been a Christian? Twenty six and a half years. Wow. He said he's been following Christ for twenty six and a half years. That's a long time. Wow.
what made you were so you weren't you those the years previous before that you weren't a christian no i was not raised in a christian household um did not follow did not care about jesus didn't care about him didn't know about him right i, mean, I knew a little bit here and there but i didn't care he did okay. not occupy my mind at all i just live my life for my pleasures, whether it was sports or drinking or fornication, whatever it was. I don't know why he didn't agree with me here that the world is so empty. Like, if you go to chase after money, after fame. Did, did you ever, like, get to the point where it just, it just felt empty? I don't know why he was disagreeing with me here when I said the world is empty. Anything this world offers, money, fame, wealth, fortune, dude, they don't end. You just keep wanting more and more and more and more. Pretty much, if you visualize this, you're just digging a hole, but you're not full. Like, you're not satisfied with this hole, so you're just going digging. Pretty much kind of like digging your own grave in a sense. But nothing this world can offer you is truly filling you're still gonna want another piece that's what i live for was that was that your sort of compensation of like the emptiness of this world uh, i mean i would i would put it in that language okay i, I just say that i love myself oh uh, pleasure i got okay uh, that, that's what i live for that why like what was the reason you came to christ well but i don't know if i would say empty and that wasn't the feeling i had i mean i, I was i was He's pretty much agreeing with me now here. But I think he just wants to sound smarter than me, bro. I'm like, I don't, I, don't, I don't have a problem. I don't got like an ego attached. So, okay. I guess we're on the same page. I didn't have the Holy Spirit. It was empty in that sense. Right. But uh, I just realized I was on the way to hell. My sin was going to cost me everything. Okay. And then I realized what Jesus Christ did on the cross for me. Right. And that great love he showed provoked me to show love back to him by giving him my whole life. Amen. Here's my standpoint on this, whether showing this sign is a loving way to fish for men, you know, to bring people to Christ. And honestly, I'm more on the yes side because he's not lying, man. Like, he's, he's straight up telling the truth with this sign. Like, mm, according to scripture, okay, this is a... You know, what makes me kind of agree with him is... I'm pretty sure Jesus preached more about hell than he ever did mention heaven, so... Maybe he's following the same methodology. I actually have one more question. So... Do you, do you think this is like a loving way to bring people to Christ? Of course it is. Like how, how, how would you, like, how would you explain that? Like, elaborate on it. Well, I mean, if you love somebody, you're going to tell them the truth, right? Right. That's true. Okay. So I'm telling people the truth. It's an act of love. I, I drove about two hours here today. Right. Um, taking time off work. Okay. I, I have a question. I'm answering this question. Oh, okay. I have a question. Oh, okay. So, I mean, that's the oldest thing you're loving. Uh, I mean, people treat me unrighteously while I'm doing this. Right. And so, oftentimes people, especially Christians, professing Christians, will criticize my methodology because I have the bad news on my side. I uh, also the good news, too. Ah. Uh... Oh! Okay, you know what? I'm gonna have to. You know what? This the. I think he's a good man. Um. Cause uh, I was at the time I wasn't even paying attention to the other side. I just assumed both sides of the sign mentioned hell, but he mentioned heaven. Like all the, lo all the like the quote unquote good notations of the teachings of Jesus Christ you know what he got a point let's say that my homie got a point uh, and my question for them is often this 
well, should I tell people the whole truth or just partial truth? Right. Telling so, people with partial truth is a whole lie if they ask me. It gives them a misunderstanding about what God is like, what he requires of them, uh, and what he's calling them to. Right. So I need to tell them the whole truth, even the stuff that doesn't feel pleasant to me or pleasant to them. Right. I'm required by God as a servant of God to do that. You know that in your heart that the people that aren't saved by Christ are going to hell, right? Yeah. So, right. So if you have a depressed friend and you're trying to help him out, do you really think it's helpful for you to initially start the convo? Yo, you're depressed. Here's what I meant by this question. I was it referring to depression like as a whole situation. I was just trying to make an analogy and just like towards convincing someone what's good and I just wanted his intake on this if you have a depressed friend does it help them to point fingers at them and say oh you're depressed like and just telling them that is good and you know well I don't think I've started combos like that well I think that's very analogous to this sign this, this, is, this sign is not a one on one conversation with somebody this sign is a proclaimer of truth. I mean, you could have said the same thing that Jesus Christ is preaching to multitudes, and some walked by and only heard the bad news. Look, bruh, Jesus said, I got the big book now, John 15, verses 18 to 20. If the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. If you belong to the world, it will love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. You could have criticized him for not giving them the whole counsel. That's not right. Maybe That's someone real. walked by when Jesus Christ was preaching on hell and they were depressed. Okay. You might accuse Jesus Christ of the same kind of accusation. My question was, was just an analogy. I wasn't referring to depression directly necessarily. Just trying to create a hypothetical situation to mimic his methodology of pointing out all the bad things or of what's happening. So I said, if you have a depressed friend, does it really help them just to bring that out straight out of the bat? Like, yo, you're depressed. Does that help them at all? And yes and no. Because I will say, as long as that's done with love, like you're 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 showing up for that person every day, you're you know checking in on him, and you know that that's pretty much kind of what he's doing is showing both sides, just just showing both sides of the teachings of Christ. Woman, maybe he was preaching about hellfire, right? And people walk by who were depressed, and you, and you might criticize him the same way. Oh no, I'm not. I'm not like trying to target like the depressed necessarily. I'm just like trying to speak on like the right. It's just like I'm talking about the methodology of like trying to cure somebody. So well, you're you're trying to bring him a cure. So Jesus is the cure to just all sin and our like to clean us. But to so you're for saying that's not the cure to depression. yeah, so yeah, he's the cure to depression. But but the bringing bringing someone like an atheist over to christ like we're we like me and you know the love of jesus christ but for some some ways it's very like aggressive like yeah like it, it is the truth but is it like is it out of love or like fear we want to strike first like what fear of god's beginning of wisdom right right but god is the beginning but where we're like so how jesus did was he Okay, you know, he didn't really directly answer my question, but he's got a point. He's not trying to initiate conversation like, a, oh, come on in, come on in. I'm not necessarily sure what his intentions were. 
But yeah, I guess he kind of just didn't answer that part of my question. He kind of just went on a different tangent. Thank you. Oh my. Uh, hold on, I'm I'm asking a question here. God loves everyone, right? Not the way you're saying. No, God loves everyone. God created everyone equally. He loves them all, right? Not the way you're defining it. Were they made in His image, though? Not the way you're defining it. God was. Everyone was made in God's image. So by this, God's a drunkard, a thief, a homosexual, a liar, a fornicator, an atheist. No, as a preacher of the truth, if you ain't getting hate, bro, you gotta start questioning yourself because uh, you're supposed to get hate. You know how much hate Jesus got? A lot. You, you, have, a, you have a misstep in logic there because I don't think so. You, you don't. Right, look, he's got a point. I think some people just don't handle fear very well. So this may be offending, you know, but you know, the truth is the truth for a reason. Some will abide and some will hate it. That's how it is, right? God has made everyone in his image, but that doesn't mean that God made people to be sinners. They've chosen to be sinners. They've chosen to, on, they've chosen to, to tar the image of God. We are made in God's image, but here's where we are tainted. We are made in the image of God, but uh, what happened was we sinned. Sin is a disease, it is distance from God. Ever since Eve and Adam, Adam and Eve ate that apple, we don't got that intimacy with God directly anymore. Not without Jesus Christ. And yeah, like we still have the image of God in us. Like what like that's how I guess our souls are in grace, I guess. And uh yeah, pretty much ever since we sinned decided to cho choose otherwise than God, you know. God told Eve not to eat the apple. But out of rebellion, we had fallen to sin. And that's the whole point of Jesus Christ coming down to save us. That's their fault. God gave them free will. So they choose to sin. It's not God's will they sin. Any sin. Ever. Okay. So if, if you're sinning, you're outside of God's will. And you're not representing his image properly. Okay. But Muslims? I gotta make sure I don't run over time for class. Muslims, that's a religion. How is that going against God? That's still, Muslims believe in God, just in a different way. Well, they're the wrong God. They're just false God. No, it's the same God. If Muslims and Christians worship the same God, then uh, why, why are they against Christianity? Hmm. Interesting. It no, it's not the same God. God. It, it, it is. is. They're both the same God. Abrahamic so, religion. That doesn't mean yeah. anything. Yes, so, it, it, it does not mean anything. The God, the God of the Bible says, I have a son. His name is Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about Jesus Christ dying on the cross for our sins. Okay? It talks about a trinity. Islam is against all three of those things. We're not they talking say, about Islam. Well, you we are talking about Islam. You brought it up. As a Christian, uh, I'm not necessarily against or for this man's uh, methodology but um i still think he's doing the work of god but is it the best approach to be a fisher of men please let me know what y'all think about this guy's way of spreading the gospel let me know in the comments sections you know we got freedom of speech over here so run it If you're new to my channel, subscribe. If you're back again, hopefully you're subscribed. If you're not, subscribe. And if you like my content, go follow my Instagram. I post a lot on there. And yeah, I do lifting, eating, just stuff I do naturally, you know. And I also do some of my faith content on there as well. Anyways, just make sure to like the video, share, and follow my IG.
I'm just another man trying to live like Jesus Christ.